A Notion task manager that enables you to easily set up your daily tasks to plan out your weekly and monthly schedule with a simple yet powerful task dashboard. If this sounds like something that could be useful for you, then join me on this tutorial and let's build it together. And if you just need a task manager but don't want to build it yourself, then check the description below for a link to get a free copy of this exact template. All I ask for in return from you is to please like this video and to subscribe to my channel to help me reach my goal of getting 1000 subscribers before the end of the year. This is a complete follow along tutorial with step by step instructions. So please don't hesitate to adjust the video playback speed to make it faster or slower to get the most out of it. By the end of this tutorial, you will have learned how to set up a basic Notion database and how to use different database views to create an interactive task management dashboard. And now let's go and build this thing. As always, we are starting completely from scratch with an empty page in my Notion workspace, which I'm going to call Task Manager. Then I'm going to choose an icon for this page for which I'm going to choose a checklist. Then I'm jumping into the page to create a new block by typing slash call and I'm going to create a caller block which is already defined with a gray background color. Then I'm going to type two hashtags followed by a space to create a second heading and I'm going to call this one content. Now I press enter to go and add another block and now I type slash data and I choose database full page from the list to create our task database. Now we are inside our new database, which I'm gonna call task database. And also here, I'm gonna add the checklist icon. The next thing I'm going to do is clicking on the view, then rename, and I'm gonna rename this view to all. And I click on this icon here and I'm gonna give it a database icon. Next up, we're gonna set up all the properties we need for our task manager. First, I'm going to rename the title property to task. Then I'm gonna click on the plus symbol. I type in date and I select the date property. And here you can choose the date format which you prefer. For me, it is day, month and year, as long as with a 24 hour format. Then I click on the plus symbol once more. I type in check to select a checkbox property, which I'm going to give the title done. Once more, I click on the plus symbol. I type in select to create a select property, which I'm going to call category. This property allows us to add different categories to our tasks. So here in the submenu, I will click on add option to add a few different categories. As an example, I've created a personal, work, finance, health and learning category. Now we have already added the most important properties to organize our tasks, but we still need to add some to add additional information to a task if needed. Again, to add these properties, we click on the plus symbol and for the first one, I'm going to type in URL to add a type URL property, which I'm going to call link. This we can use to add any link that could contain information to a specific task. Then I click on the plus symbol once more and I type in file because I want to add a files and media type property, which I'm going to call attachments, which is going to allow me to upload any kind of files to my task. For the next one, I'm going to click on plus again. I type in URL once more and I'm going to call this one location because this is where I'm going to save any Google Maps link that is relevant for my task. For another property, I'm going to type in email which I'm going to call contact, which is obviously where I'm going to add any contact information that is relevant. Lastly, I'm going to click once more on the plus. I type in phone and I'm going to select a property of the type phone, which is obviously to enter any kind of phone numbers if they are relevant. The last thing I'm going to do in this view is I'm going to reorganize them a little bit. First, I make the done checkbox smaller by dragging this to the side and then I move it all the way to the back. I also move the date property to the back and the category in front of the date as well. And now I'm going to add a few sample tasks so that we have some data to work with for the rest of the tutorial. Now that I've added some sample data, there's a few last tweaks I want to make to this view. By clicking on the three dot menu on layout, I'm going to deactivate wrap all columns to make everything always shown in one line. And I also want to sort this database view by clicking on these two arrows up here by selecting date and then I'm going to chase the sending date order which is going to make sure that the latest tasks are always shown at the top. And now we're going to create several other database views which is going to allow us to look at our task data in different ways. To do so we're going to click on the plus symbol next to the all view and I'm going to select list. 
Then I'm going to click on the tab and press on rename and I'm going to call this view to do. Then I'm going to click on layout and deactivate show page icon. Then I go back into the menu. I click on properties and here I'm going to click on show all properties and I'm going to rearrange them. I'm going to move the done property to the end, the date property just in front of it, the category in front of it, and I'm going to move the link just underneath the task property, followed by the attachment, followed by the location, the contact and the form. Then I'm going to go back to the menu and I'm going to click on filter. Here I select done and as a filter I'm going to set up to only see tasks where done is unchecked. I head back to the menu. Next up I'm going to click on sort and in sort again I want to sort by the date because in this list I want to see the tasks in the order that I still have to deal with them from top to bottom. Then I can go back and I can click out of this view because this view is now already set up. And as you can see, we have a nice list view with all the tasks that we still have open to do. Now we're also going to create a list with all the tasks that have already been done. For this, I simply make a right click on the to do view and I click duplicate. And this one I'm going to call done. And I'm going to change the icon to the checked list icon. And I'm going to make two changes here. I'm going to click on filter. I'm going to change the filter to checked, then I head back and I'm also going to change the sort to descending because then I can look at these tasks in the order that I have recently worked on them. Then I can close this again and as you can see now our last completed task is at the top and the oldest task is at the bottom. The next views that we are going to create are calendar views and for this I'm going to make a right click on the to-do list, I click on duplicate I'm going to call it to do. I will keep it just the same. Then I click on layout. I change the layout to calendar and these settings are already correct. I want to see the whole month. I want to see weekends and the sort is by date, which is our date property. So this is all set up correctly. The filter, as you can see now, is still set to unchecked, which is what we wanted because we duplicated this view. The sort technically we can delete here because the calendar will always show it by date. For the properties, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to move the done checkbox up here so that it also allows me to mark my tasks as checked from this view. And the rest I'm going to leave as hidden properties. Then I jump out of this menu. I'm going to make a right click on the newly created calendar view. I duplicate it simply. I'm going to call this one done. And the only thing I change now is I set the filter again to checked which leaves us with two remaining database views to create because I want to see what are the exact tasks that I have to do today and also for tomorrow. To create these views, I'm going to make a right click on our to-do list view. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it today and I'm going to add the target icon as in goals that I want to reach today. The properties are still set up correctly, but we will have to change our filter. So I click on it. I click on the drop down menu and I click on the three dot menu here to add an advanced filter. And I'm going to add another filter rule by clicking here. And then the first one, I'm going to change the date property. I set the start date and then I'm going to select is on or before today. This means that this list view will only show us tasks that are either from today or before and that are still unchecked. Why did I set it up this way? Because I want to make sure that if we didn't check off a task from yesterday or earlier, that it's not getting lost in the void. I still want to show it as if it is a task for today so that I can deal with it either by moving it into the future or by simply taking care of it today. And now we can go back to the menu, click on sort and remove the sort because for the today view, this is not needed. And then I can close the menu and also close the filter menu by clicking here. And now we're going to create another view based on this one by doing another duplication of this today view. This time I'm gonna call it tomorrow. I'm gonna assign it a different icon. For this, I'm gonna choose the calendar with the day window here. And for the filter, obviously we have to change this one now because now the filter that we just set up says it's either on or before today. But now we're going to set it simply to is and to tomorrow. So this view is only going to show us tasks that we have to do tomorrow. And I can jump back out again 
and the rest is already set up as needed. The last thing I'm going to do now is simply rearrange the views a little bit. I'm going to move the today view all the way to the front, followed by the tomorrow view. Then I'm going to put in the to do calendar view and the done calendar view. And then lastly, the to do list, the done list and the all view, which is my setup database view all the way in the end. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial so far, so please don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. My goal is to reach 1000 subscribers before the end of this year, which I can only achieve with your help. And now let's build the dashboard. To create our dashboard, let's jump back into the main page. And here I'm going to create a new callout block by typing in callout, then followed by two hashtags. And here I call this section upcoming. Then I'm going to select the entire block. I press Ctrl D to duplicate it and I'm going to call this one calendar. I go below to create one more callout without a heading. I'm going to type slash toggle and here I select toggle heading two from the list and this one I'm going to call all tasks. Then I make another empty line and I add a divider block by typing in slash diff and selecting divider from the list. And now I'm going to move the content callout all the way from the top to the bottom. And now I'm going to select a few more empty lines to put in between here so that we can work with our content. And we have some space for each section. Now that we have some space, I'm going to jump up here to start adding our created database view by typing in linked. I select linked view of database. Then I click on task database, which we have just created before. And here I can simply choose the views that we have already created from the list. So I don't have to make them all from scratch. I simply select the today view. And the only thing I'm going to change here is click on the three dots next to the title and hide it. Then I go into the block below. I do the exact same thing again. I type in slash linked. I select the task database again. Here I'm going to choose the tomorrow view. And once more, I scroll up here and I go back and hide the database title. But in my case, I would like to have these view next to each other. So I'm going to drag the entire view by clicking here on the six dot menu and I drag it next to the today view. But now you can see it looks a bit cramped and we won't be able to see even the date or the checkbox because they're both too narrow. So now one thing I'm going to do for our dashboard is I'm going to jump into the three dot menu here in the top. And I'm going to select full width so that our entire page becomes bigger. So now you can see our date and our checkbox has appeared nicely with these views still being next to each other. Then I'm going to jump into our calendar section and I do the same thing again by typing in linked, selecting linked view of database, selecting the task database. And now I select our to do calendar list, which I can identify by the icon. I click on it. And again, I click on the three dots to hide the database title. And now I don't create a separate view in a different window. I'm just going to add this view over here by clicking on the plus because these ones I don't want to see next to each other. I just want to be able to select from them. I'm going to select empty view and then I can choose the task database again. And I choose here the done calendar view. So now we have after removing the title again, you can see that now I can easily toggle between these views. One shows me all the tasks that still need to be done and the other one shows us all the tasks that we already have done. And for the last section, I'm going down here into the all tasks view where I'm going to go right into the toggle. I'm going to type in linked. Again, to add another database view, I select our task database and here I'm going to choose the to do list. And again, I'm going to hide the database title. Then I click on the plus sign next to the to do list and select another empty view. I select the task database once more. And now lastly, I select the done list so that we also have this one in here. Again, I hide the database title. And now we have a master list for both the done tasks as well as the to do tasks at the bottom of our dashboard. And because I'm not going to use this view too much, I just want to be able to access it if needed. So I just hide this here in a toggle, which I can easily close, which also allows us to load this dashboard a little bit faster, especially when we have lots of tasks in our list. And now I'm going to just clean up some of the empty lines that I don't need. 
And this already concludes the work on our task dashboard, where now we have an upcoming section where we can see at a glance the today's task as well as tomorrow's task. We have a calendar view that shows us all the tasks that need to be done or the ones that have already been done. And we have an all task list where we just can take a look at everything that still is open or has already been completed if needed. And now I'm going to show you the exact workflow I use to set up my own daily tasks how I plan them out over the week, and how I use the simple controls of this task dashboard to be able to flexibly move tasks around and to stay on top of my priorities. Whenever I'm adding new tasks to my list, I first start off by clicking here on new page in my today view to add them to the list, like these two. Then I go into the calendar where I can easily drag and drop them around to organize my week. So for example, on a Sunday night, I might sit down and add all the tasks that I want to do in the upcoming week to my today view. Then I go down here and just move them around because then I have a nice overview in the calendar. What you can also do at the end of the day when you were not able to finish a task, you can simply move a task from one view to another, which will automatically change its state. So from today, I was not able to like my task manager video. I'm just going to move it to tomorrow which will change its state. And also you can see in the calendar, everything is responsive. And you could even, if we wanted to, move a task from the tomorrow view into the calendar later. But you can also, of course, all do this up down here. So this is really a nice interactive way of setting up your tasks and also moving them around flexibly. Of course, you can further customize this dashboard and the entire task database by adding additional views. For example, maybe you want to add views or an entire section for all the different categories of tasks that you have set up. So maybe one for work, one for personal, one for finance and so on. This will also allow you to easily add new tasks to each individual category with just a few clicks. And there's one more feature that I want to show you in the task database, which might help you to set up any recurring tasks that you might be dealing with. So let's jump back into the task database and I'm actually going to unlock it up here. Here in the top right of the database, you can see the new button as well as an arrow, which when you click it will open the database template menu. By clicking here on a new template, you can easily create recurring tasks. For example, I can type monthly bookkeeping, which I'm going to assign the finance category and the date I'm going to set to today which means every time this template is created, it will automatically fill the date with the date of today. Now I can jump out of this. Now I go into the database template menu once more and I click on the three dots next to the template and I click on repeat, which is going to allow me to set this template to be added to my task list automatically on a regular basis. Here I can choose daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and of course I can turn it off again. So for monthly bookkeeping, obviously I would select monthly and I want it to occur every month because I have to do the monthly bookkeeping once a month, but you could even set up like a quarterly task here and I can choose a start date. So for this one, I'm gonna choose 1st of January, which means this template will now be created on every first of the month. And then I can click save and you can verify if it has been activated by seeing these blue arrows activated here. And as I said, by clicking on it and turning it off, you can also get rid of this. But this is just a simple way to add recurring tasks to your list. The only downside it has that these tasks will only show up in your database on the day when they are actually being duplicated by the Notion automation. You will not see them in advance, but it's a super easy way to set up simple recurring tasks which works well for many use cases. I hope you enjoyed this build along tutorial and that it is useful for you to build your own perfect Notion task management system. Get a free copy of this template by following the link in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel to help me reach my 1000 subscriber goal. And leave a comment below to share your feedback and to let me know what kind of template or tutorial you would like to see next. Lastly, make sure to subscribe to my newsletter for free Notion tips and updates, as well as exclusive launch discounts for my upcoming pro templates.